Hi everybody, this is Fly Fisher here. Uh, this is my uh, first uh, crystal cell battery that I made. Um, I just wanted to show you the actual size. As you can see, the size is uh, basically four inches, or the size of the uh, half the size of this uh, Coke bottle here. Um, my approach to this uh, project was um, twofold. Um, you know, I watched a lot of the videos on YouTube of uh, Laser Saber and some other guys, you know, producing these uh, these crystal cell batteries. And uh, <clears throat> my approach here was I wanted to go big because I thought I could get you know bigger output. Um, and uh, now that I'm you know actually testing this baby out. Um, it does not matter size. Um, at the end of the day, I'm producing the same amount of voltage uh, as uh, Laser, Laser Saber and some of the other guys' uh, smaller uh, crystal cell batteries. This is uh, using a uh, one and a half inch copper pipe. Uh, I got a good deal at Home Depot, $14 for 10 feet. So that's the premise for why my batteries started out this, this large. Um, and then I ended up getting the magnesium on mine from, uh, what is it, uh, on, uh, online from Gallium Source, I believe, and it was $16. Um, anyhow, the methodology, I mean, the process for making it is exactly the same way as, um, as the other guys. Uh, how I did it basically was, uh, I, uh, let me take this out. I, uh, started out with my, 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 my magnesium, right? And what I did was, is that I actually took just black electrical tape and uh, just kept wrapping around the bottom of the circumference of the uh, copper pipe here. Actually, let me take that back. I started, I did it on the top of the magnesium here. I, I did the electrical wrap all the way around until it was the thickness of the copper. So then what I did was, when I had it finally stuffed in there, I had it centered. Then I started packing in the, uh, the uh, Epsom salt, the uh, Mule 20, the Alum, and uh, whatever the heck, the other, uh, the fake salt. Mixed it up, smashed it in there, got it in there really good. And then what I did was I then took um, just, uh, I took... Uh, what is it, uh, your gr Gorilla Glue, and I just kind of filled in in layers uh, about um, uh, about an eighth of an inch, uh, a layer of glue at the bottom, and let it seal overnight. So that's what I did here, and then the next day what I did was I then, what I did was with the electrical tape, I only put half of the electrical tape on and half of the electrical tape hanging off the actual magnesium rod. So in the morning, what I could do is I could actually just, I could just pull out really easily the electrical tape. It just slides right out. Um, it doesn't really stick to the magnesium. So it was a nice way of just keeping it centered. Um, I didn't have, you know, PVC pipe and all that other stuff that, you know, would make my job much easier so what I did was I just easily uh, put the pull the tape out and then <clears throat> what I did later was I added uh, some water uh, and I just let the water soak in it took uh, several uh, hours almost uh, it was another day really because it was so packed in there that for the water to actually get down there it took a good t good deal amount of time um, once that was dry then I just actually uh, then did the Gorilla Glue along the top to seal it. Um, I had to go back and redo it but uh, so the glue's not in here but um, you know if you want to get a nice seal just add the glue in afterwards. <clears throat> so anyhow the next point I want to make out is that the size does not matter so this four inch battery I made produces the same amount as Labor Saber and everybody else and it's really is just pulling out 1.37 volts and uh, one half uh, uh, a half a milliamp. So the half a milliamp is basically no different than any other battery. 
and no different than what I made here. So my argument is, and I think this is what the whole community of, uh, <clears throat> of us should understand, um, is that what we have to do or understand is no matter the size, you're only going to be able to produce 1.5 volts. It's just like a car battery. It's just like a, a golf cart battery. Um, everything, every cell can only produce 1.5 volts, uh, give or take, right? I thought I could produce more volts in this, but obviously that's not true. So my next, uh, my next project is I'm actually going to cut this baby up into three pieces. And, uh, um, <clears throat> and my, uh, my hypothesis is if I do that, cut it up into three parts, <clears throat> um, I should be able to produce four and a half volts. But with this current setup, I'm only going to get one and a half. So, um, I'll just go over to the amps real quick here. See, it starts out. It did start out at. It always starts out at 150 milliamps, but it'll fall down to about 50, and then it'll start gradually increasing. So, there you have it. Um, so next steps, uh, you know, like I said, each cell is only one and a half volts. So. Um, you know, obviously right at this point, I'm seeing that size does not matter. Um, I'm going to cut this down to three so I can save my money. I should get four and a half volts. But I think I might even go smaller and do the uh, penny experiment uh, with uh, just shaving off the one side of the penny, uh, revealing the zinc, and uh, do a penny battery. And, uh, you know, I could save a lot of space and probably increase the, uh, the voltage than, you know, making these behemoths. <clears throat> but following the crystal cell um, methodology in creating uh, the penny battery. But uh, my next video, I'm going to have this baby cut up. Um, and let's see if I can produce 4.5 volts out of it. So until then, this is Fly Fisher. Take care.